Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our inaugural uh, GPS-based pigeon race from Perongia to Auckland. And uh, this is race one for us. The uh, flight today takes us uh, from Perongia. You see that at the uh, bottom of the graphic there, and uh, just adjacent to Te Awamutu. Uh, tracking up past Hamilton, uh, Narawahia and Huntley, and uh, stopping just short of Pocono, which is uh, that finishing arc there represents about half a kilometre short or half a kilometre short of our front marker which is uh, Craig Gray's loft. The uh, weather for today we've got a uh, terminal aerodrome forecast for Hamilton uh, covering the period of our race. Um, the top line there has uh, been and gone as far as the uh, times go and uh, then they've got a uh, tempo there, so temporary changes lasting no more than an hour between uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow morning, or this morning rather, and uh, 3 to 6 o'clock this morning. Uh, those times there is from 1400 to 1700, those times represent uh, Greenwich Mean Time. New Zealand is 13 hours ahead of those, um, so that uh, gives you the uh, local time for the uh, the weather that they're talking about there. So they're talking about showers of rain and 7,000 metres of visibility and broken cloud at uh, 1,400 feet. Um, that uh, weather is supposed to clear by 6 o'clock and uh, we anticipate having the birds uh, underway by about uh, 11 to 12 o'clock this morning. Uh, the wind then through the morning um, at or by about 8 o'clock this morning, that uh, 1900 figure there is uh, going to become 200 degrees true at 10 knots. So a southwesterly breeze, fairly light. They've got a quartering tailwind for their trip uh, north today. Uh, as I was talking about in the proof of concept race, the birds rely heavily on um, the extra cone they have in their eyes to sense the uh, into the infrared and ultraviolet light. Um, so they are very prone to any excessive solar radiation uh, that occurs across the route. Uh, just looking to the right there and down towards the bottom, you see for December the 21st, so that uh, covers uh, New Zealand, which of course is uh, ahead of this forecast um, of Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, showing just a 1% chance of a solar radiation storm forecast, which is very good and uh, uh, shouldn't cause the birds any problems for today's flight. So our race is today uh, for race one, Perongia to Auckland. We have Bridie, um, who for those of you who watched the uh, proof of concept race, um, Bridie's carried the GPS ring before. She's got experience um, with handling the equipment. And a two-year-old Blue Bar White Flight Hen from Redvale Loss and Dairy Flat, trained by Warwick Fenton. Uh, her brother's the combine winner for uh, Clint uh, van der Meersht and the dam from Ferguselli. Third in the Rof Lof uh, Redvale Loft flock from Levin last week. I think that may be just a little bit old. I think that's more like a, a month ago for that particular slide. Next bird up we have is Goose, eight-year-old uh, checker hen from the Angry Birds Loft. Lynchpin for the Angry Birds and uh, has raced as far as Christchurch and uh, paired with Paddy. Next we have uh, Gray. Trainer is Craig Gray. Uh, Gray is a three-year-old blue bar cock from Craig Gray's well-performing loft and should do well here today. Beautiful looking bird, a lovely eye uh, there. Next up we have Zabil, trained by Kerry Fraser. Zabil is a two-year-old blue bar pied cock. has got excellent form at the moment, winning two combines this year and has been the winning with the winning birds uh, in two other races. Finally, we have Kidlet. Uh, that's lightning in uh, the Filipino language. Uh, trained by Louis Morales and uh, checker cock from the Brains Loft. He's very territorial and loves blocking the loft door so no one can come in and out. So a little bit of a, a, uh, a comedian there to a degree. So that's our, um, our flock for the race today. And uh, with those five lofts represented, I do hope you enjoy the race and that will be commencing shortly. So here we go, our uh, inaugural flight from Prongia through to Auckland. Uh, it'll be about uh, 80 kilometres in length 
and uh, unfortunately we've had some issues uh, with the data stream from one of the birds uh, has been badly corrupted um, and unfortunately not recoverable because of that uh, we've had to uh, uh, do a, a technical scratching for Zabil so uh, we now have four birds being represented uh, for the four different lofts today um, and uh, we're just coming up with the start very soon um, and uh, as you can see as they set off we have uh, goose uh, sitting off to the uh, to the west there and uh, bridey um, just making her way north kidlet and grey uh, just starting to make some good progress but further off to the east uh, goose has taken a more uh, uh, circuitous routing there off towards the higher country that's Mount Parongia down in the uh, bottom left hand side of the screen at the moment as uh, they make their way up country um, and uh, we can start to see some of the river systems there uh, appearing on the right hand side they say that if uh, you present a movie to a pigeon um, in the regular um, 60 frames a second uh, the bird would have to or would see that as a um, as a slideshow um, with a pause between each one you'd have to actually increase the speed by about 10 times before you um, had a uh, cohesive moving image for the pigeon that's how quickly they're, they're um, um, processing the images that actually come into their eyes as they make their way north so uh, Fotofot is visible at the moment um, we've got uh, Bridie making good progress towards her home loft uh, as I was saying in the last video they do uh, use um, the uh, extra cone of their eyes which can see into the infrared into the ultraviolet band um, for part of their ability to track um, as the uh, ions from the Sun come through the atmosphere they uh, tend to reflect light in a uh, in the uh, orientation of the north and south um, so they can actually see it as waves of lights just as we would see the uh, the lights from the um, uh, auroras in the northern and summer southern hemisphere Kidlet's doing a few circles there um, as she orientates herself Gray's headed over towards uh, Frankton and Hamilton, the suburb of Hamilton there, and um, that uh, Waikato River is running through the uh, uh, Hamilton itself. Bridie is coming up towards Fotafota, taking a, a more direct line at the moment, and uh, Goose is headed off towards the high country there. Uh, during the war they used to have um, a couple of pigeons on board each of the Lancasters the idea being that if the um, crew were shot down they could put a message in the leg of the uh, the homing pigeon and uh, and send it off um, telling bomber command where the aircraft has come down and what their intentions are uh, so Gray is making very good progress as uh, he journeys north and uh, Bridie also is making good ground towards Tokofi, taking the more westerly track there. Uh, Kidlet is not far behind. So you'll notice that uh, each of the birds, the line that they started on at the, uh, the beginning there uh, was a line, and that line being a line of latitude, that line of latitude being predetermined before the race actually began. There's been some documentaries uh, out about how pigeons do actually home. Uh, one of the more uh, interesting ones is uh, suggested that they use smell to do that and they generate a, a, an odour map as it were uh, of their home loft um, which is a, a, a theory but uh, probably not a very valid one in that uh, birds themselves have only very few taste buds so you can extrapolate from that and, and uh, probably make a fair guess that their sense of smell is very poor um, so we've got that high country coming up towards the uh, from the left there 
uh, looks like Bridie is going to be striking that first. Uh, Gray has orientated himself uh, much better for those, that series of gaps uh, through the higher country there. Uh, one uh, being run through by the Waikato River. Uh, Kidlet's heading off towards that uh, high country at the moment, and uh, Goose is heading off towards Hamilton, trying to find a route that uh, she might be familiar with. So uh, Gray is following fairly closely to the road uh, as a makeaway north. Bridie's just heading over Narawa here at present. And uh, Kidlet's taken that gap in the range as it appears uh, just towards the uh, bottom of the screen. So as I say, an 80 kilometre race. Um, we're coming up towards uh, about the, uh, just before the halfway mark at the moment. One of the studies done by Cornell University um, they um, basically jet lagged the birds in a way where they gave them artificial day and night um, and uh, they had some of the birds that uh, uh, from the actual day and night uh, they had them uh, with artificial uh, day and night with, uh, with an error by three hours some of them by six hours, some of them by nine hours, and Cornell was able to uh, induce a, an error in the tracking of the birds that was measurable by about 30 degrees for every three hours. So uh, on release, they measured the, uh, the, the vanishing point towards their home loft. They would have the release point, uh, they would have a, a point on the horizon which would represent the uh, track towards their home loft. And the error the birds had as they vanished from view uh, was measurable depending on the amount uh, they'd been jet, la jet lagged, quote unquote. Uh, they also uh, followed the birds with light aircraft and they found that they still uh, determined the error that they had they would make significant changes in direction every 20 to 30 minutes. So effectively they're using a sun sighting there um, to determine uh, what uh, line of longitude they should be on and affecting a change because of that. So if you relate that to how a human uh, functions, if we in the next moment found ourselves in Australia rather than New Zealand, uh, we find ourselves in the middle of the afternoon rather than uh, approaching evening as we have here at the moment. Um, so you would be able to determine from that as a human that uh, you should actually be further uh, east than where you currently were uh, and, and uh, jump on a plane to correct that. So Gray and Bridie making uh, good ground now. Uh, Gray is obviously comfortable following the road system there. Uh, Bridie's following a much more direct track uh, home. Kidlet is also uh, making good ground and uh, it looks like it's going to be a very close run race. Uh, unfortunately Goose is nowhere to be seen. It appears that uh, she's um, still orientating herself down towards Hamilton. So uh, not on the race at the moment. So Kidlet from Brains Loft uh, making very good ground at present. Uh, Bridie from Redvale Loft, and then uh, we have Craig Gray uh, with his bird Gray uh, representing uh, his loft. And Kidlet's just making a few manoeuvres there as uh, she organises herself. And Bridie's making some very good ground towards the north. So it's turning into a, uh, a two bird race at the moment.
coming up towards Tikawata on the right hand side Lake Wakari on the right there as well, we've just passed that and uh, heading up towards Hampton Downs um, which you may know has got uh, some racetracks there So uh, just to the left of Bridie, looking up uh, the Waikato River as the river hooks around to the right, uh, that's the uh, Mary Mary Dragway there. And uh, the birds are sticking fairly close to the uh, State Highway 1 as they journey north. Kidlet's made a few manoeuvres to the south there and uh, just found her feet again as it were and uh, just heading off towards the north. Her loft of course is out uh, to the west of Auckland so you'd expect her to have a more westerly track anyway uh, which indeed she has and uh, the finish line just coming into view now um, so that's falling half a kilometre short of Craig Gray's loft he is uh, the front marker for this race bridie has got the best of Gray at the moment though And it looks like it's going to be a very close race indeed between these two birds. So just crossing the Waikato River at present. And... Uh, We've just got Mercer coming up on the right hand side there. Mercer is just beyond the finishing line. Um, Bridie has got the, uh, the lead at present as we come up to that finish. Uh, Gray is just trailing ever so slightly, um, but uh, would be able to see home loft at the moment. So I'll be heading straight there. So here we go up to the line now. Bridie is just crossing the line. It looks like uh, Bridie has just... No, no, Bridie's taken a, uh, a, a left-hand turn, just pipped at the post by Gray. Uh, Gray um, would have lined up home loft and just headed uh, uh, just as we cross the line. So we've just had a, a lead swap just as we cross with Gray crossing first and uh, Bridie are very very close behind Kidlet coming in third uh, it seems and uh, making good ground towards her home loft so Bridie's still got some ground to cover she uh, has her loft home loft in uh, North Auckland up towards Dairy Flat and Gray has settled into um, his home loft and Kidlet's coming up uh, very close behind so our third placing it appears So Kidlet's just coming up to the line. Uh, Gray's probably settling in, probably having something to eat at this stage. And uh, Kidlet crosses the line. So uh, there's our placings for the inaugural uh, GPS-based race, pigeon race, from uh, Prongia through to Auckland. Uh, we have Gray from Craig Gray Lofts um, taking it out. Bridie coming a very, very close second. Uh, from Redvale Lofts and uh, Kidlet from Brains Loft uh, and just come taking out the third position. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed uh, what you've seen today and uh, uh, we have a scheduled race uh, or to be scheduled race uh, in the second half of January which will be from Tikwiti. hope you're able to join us then and hope you all have a, a very Merry Christmas. Thank you.